I am super excited to show you my book of the month book selections that I chose this month. They had some pretty good choices. For those of you who are not familiar with book of the month, I can help you to understand that. First of all, I should say I am not affiliated with book of the month, nor am I sponsored. I just happen to really, really like them. So book of the month is a book box subscription where you pay $14.99 per month if you so choose to pick a book that month. If you don't want a book that month, you do not pick, you decline, and they do not charge you. Easy enough. So with that $14.99 subscription, you get to pick a book that's valued at, I've seen some at $17 and I've seen them at $27.99. I always, always, always choose add-ons. You get to choose up to two add-ons. The add-ons are only $9.99 each. So for about $35, you're getting three books that are released most oftentimes before the booksellers even get them. It is a fantastic deal. If you go into the bookstore you're and you bought those same three books, you are going to be right around $75, $80. My books will be delivered on um, Thursday. Should, I should get them about Thursday. And I am super excited to show you what I bought and to give you a little snippet of what they're about. I think you're really, really going to enjoy that. Hi, and welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you could join me. If you have not subscribed to my channel already, please do so. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up, as well as any previous videos you might catch. I would greatly appreciate it. BFFs! <laughs> what should we do with today's video? I feel like... Okay. I still have some birthday books lingering. Let me see if I can do this. I have about this many birthday books that I didn't unpack yet because I have a ritual when I buy books and I bring it into the house. Um, but I will I will do another video on that because it's pretty, um, I don't know, maybe it's weird. I don't know, but I get a kick out of it. So maybe I'll do that in another video. Somewhere down the line, somewhere down the line, somewhere down the line. I don't know if you can see this, but I'll put the can, I'll try to put the camera Hmm. Oh, I'll just do this. I'll just, if you could see this, but can you see that plant? Am I doing a good job? Can you see that? It is not growing. It is not getting any bigger since the day that I bought it. That's because it's fake. Okay, so let's get into the books that I am reading. I am reading. Enough Already by Valerie Bertinelli. I happen to have that one in front of me. I am almost done with that. I probably will finish that today. I also am working on The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I'm still working on Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. I am also working on The Life We Bury by Alan Eskin. That is my book club pick of the month, and I am per near done with that. Um, I just have maybe two chapters left, and uh, that one will be completed. I just started The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. All right, guys, so that's that. Well... Do, should I get into these books or not? I don't know. What do you think? 
I have no idea what is even in these bags anymore because my birthday was April 24th and it is now May 2nd. But here we go. What do we got? What do we, oh, you grow, girl. Plant Queen's Lush Guide to Growing Your Garden, Christopher Griffin. Now, I saw this and I have a little bit, a little bit, maybe about five or six plants around the house. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, about seven plants around the house. And um, although I do all right with my plants, um, they are the easiest. That's why I buy them, the snake plant. They're literally like they take care of themselves. Something like that, I could never keep. I just know it. I know it. I am hoping to learn a thing or two from that book. I'm just going to put these up here. All right, here we go. What do we got? We got The Red Leather Diary, Reclaiming a Life Through the Pages of a Lost Journal, Lily Capel. Looks like that. When I picked this up, this is what sold me on it. Uh, for more than a half century, the red leather diary languished inside a streamer trunk. Rescued from a dumpster on Manhattan's Upper West Side, it found its way to Lily Coppell, a young writer who opened its tarnished brass lock and journeyed into an enthralling past. The diary painted a breathtaking portrait of a bygone New York of glamorous nights at El Morocco and elegant teas at Schraff's during the 1920s and 30s, and of the headstrong, endearing teenager who filled its pages with her hopes, heartaches, and vivid recollections. Intrigued, Capel followed her only clue, a frontispiece inscription to its now 90-year-old owner, Florence Wolfson and was enchanted as Florence reunited with her diary, rediscovered a lost younger self burning with artistic fervor. Joining intimate interviews with original diary entries, the Red Leather Diary recreates the romance and promise of a remarkable era and brings to life the true story of a daring, precocious young dreamer. Stories from Suffragette City. Women have no vote at all. Stories from Suffragette City is a collection of short stories that all take place on a single day. October 23, 1915. The day when tens of thousands of women marched up Fifth Avenue in New York City demanding the right to vote. 13 of today's best-selling authors have taken this moment as inspiration to raise the voices of history and breathe fresh life into their struggles and triumphs. Next in line, Danielle Chamovitz, What a Plant Knows. A fascinating inside look at what a plant's life is like and a new lens on our own place in nature. For example, how does a Venus flytrap know when to snap shut? Can it feel an insect's tiny legs? And how do cherry blossoms know when to bloom? Can they actually remember the weather? For centuries, we have collectively marbled out of plant diversity and form. But now, in What a Plant Knows, the renowned biologist Daniel Chamovitz presents an intriguing look at how plants themselves experience the world, from the colors they see to the schedules they keep. What do we got? Oh. Uh, Nice. Look at that. The Scottish Bookshop Mysteries. It is by Paige Shelton. One Winter's Night. Bookseller Delaney Nichols and her co-worker Hamlet are invited to a Burns Night Dinner, a traditional Scottish celebration of the poet Robert Burns. She's perplexed by the invitation, but intrigued. The dinner takes place at Burns' house itself, 
a tiny cottage not far from the cracked spine bookshop, but well hidden. There, it becomes clear that Delaney and Hamlet were summoned for motives that might have something to do with getting back at their boss, Edwin, who is suspected of burning down one of the dinner club members' bookshops 20 years ago after a disagreement about a book and an ex-wife. But after the dinner, there's another fire. The Burns' house itself is burned to the ground, and this time there's a body among the ruins. When Hamlet is accused of the crime, Delaney rushes to prove his innocence, only to discover that he might actually have a plausible motive. Pretty cool. All right, so that is the end of bag one. Let's pull the plug on five because I have one, two, three, four, five more. So my uh, ring light just blew out and I don't feel like running downstairs to grab the other one. So anyways, I can't leave without telling you goodbye. So... As I was saying, I love you. I wish you health and happiness. And I also wish you the energy of a six-year-old. <laughs>